Welcome back. We are taking on another topic in our exploration of the many topics of art history, and that is social protest. All right, we are pivoting now to the PowerPoint. Let's meet our first artist, and it is Goya. The painting we're looking at is called 3rd of May, 1808. It was painted later, a topic from hindsight in the years 1814 to 1815. This painting commemorates the massacre of Spanish peasants by the French a few years earlier than its uh, creation. At that time, the King of Spain turned to Napoleon when he wanted to keep the citizens from overthrowing him. Napoleon, being a powerful uh, force in Europe at the time, sent in French troops to quash any rebellion that might begin in Spain, and in a heavy-handed way uh, executed Spanish civilians. Here in this painting, you can see Goya showing the fire, firing line in action, about to kill a few citizens. One stands out the most in contrast to the others because he is wearing a white shirt and his arms are outstretched in a pose that's probably reminiscent to something you are already thinking of. It's reminiscent of the pose that Christ took when Jesus was on the cross of his crucifixion. You can read in his face intense emotion and anguish, which is a contrast to the anonymous faceless executioners you see here. Others are about to be shot next, while those who've already been massacred lay in a bloody heap in our immediate foreground site. Goya heightens the drama of the scene through the use of high contrast lighting as well. And he's created this shallow stage effect, um, bringing it right in front of the viewer's eyes as if the viewer were actually there bearing witness to this crime against humanity and abuse of power. Another artist who tackled similar subjects in art history was Katie Kolwitz. This is a etching, a technique in printmaking called the outbreak or Losbruch in German from 1903. I've included a self-portrait of the artist uh, on the upper left because I have a couple of examples of her body of work in self-portraiture, I think, that are a nice complement um, in terms of biography to understand this really unique and unusual female artist of the 20th century. She's most known as being one of the great graphic artists and printmakers in art history. She uh, uses a powerful mix of color, line, and form for expressive results. And her art leans more into social realism with subjects that focused on the poor and struggling inhabitants of Germany's neighborhoods, where her husband, a physician, often treated the underprivileged. A large body of Kolwitz's work is in printmaking the result of her being denied entry into Berlin's men's only art academy of the early 20th century. She instead intended a women's art school where she learned about graphic art and printmaking, which fortunately was taught there. And she leaned heavily into that technique and the result is powerful results that only the graphic look of printmaking can achieve. 
It's also something that can be produced in multiples as well as reproduced in different publications for an even greater, wider audience, as we learned in the work of Daumier in 19th century French art. So she often produced work in this printmaking technique now, while there's a large body of work we'll take a look at momentarily that focuses on current events and times, the outbreak, um, which we have here, focuses on the peasant war that happened in the 16th century in Germany. Although the actual revolt was sadly doomed, this is one print in the series that's all about empowerment and agency. Peasants gathered with their tools as weapons are depicted by Kolwitz pouring forth to stand up for themselves. Look how the older woman in the immediate foreground whose back faces us seems to energize the people with her arms raised in a gesture of, we've had it with oppression a life you can imagine led for decades under such conditions of inequity and abuse. And it's an image that is meant to galvanize people who seemed to not have power to rise up and take a stand for themselves. And what I love especially is that it's a older woman who is energizing the crowd so different um, a choice if this was produced by a male artist. Moving on to her uh, style of art associated with new objectivity in Germany. That was a style um, associated with art made during the Weimar Republic era. That's the era in between World Wars I and II. It was a style of art that captured the harsh and unpleasant realities of life um, associated with those years, corruption, decadence, social ne neglect, etc. So she continued her printmaking in this era as well. And as you can see in her self-portrait, she's now a slightly older woman, right? And here we're looking at another uh, print from a series that she made uh, called The Volunteers. Um, this is plate number two from a series called Der Krieg or War uh, from 1922 to 1923. It's also a form of printmaking, but from the woodcut technique. What you can see in this print is uh, a more graphic um, and um, presentation of um, the depiction of those who likely had hope and promise of uh, signing up for war, um, following a drumbeat, um, meaning the propaganda of a certain outcome and promise um, that was a misleading, you know, direction um, at this point in German history. From the lens of hindsight after World War I and the atrocities and loss of life that occurred in that period of war, um, artists like Kolwitz are focusing on, you know, that disturbing realization that really the volunteers these faces uh, whose, you know, gaunt bone structures and body language of, uh, of giving up, of um, dismay, um, further underscore the tragedy and the loss of life as a result of that war, especially when they seem to be, you know, resigned to following the drumbeat of death you might notice the skull-like face of the figure here, holding a drumstick and beating the drum that will lead them into doom. Fast forward to the 90s. 
And what you find is that the divided country of Germany that was uh, divided into Eastern and Western halves uh, following the World War II decision by the Allies, uh, you, found, you find that Katie Kollwitz, though long deceased, the legacy of her powerful art um, continues in a recreation of an, a copy of an original Kolwitz statue um, increased in scale by four times called Pieta, Woman with Dead Son. This is a classic topic in art history. Uh, Michelangelo, for instance, in the Renaissance, uh, featured this as a uh, one of his most famous early works depicting the Virgin Mary cradling the recently crucified body of Christ in her arms. It's often a powerful way of depicting that one-on-one -on -one grief between mother and child. And though this one isn't necessarily religious, it's meant to represent all mothers who've lost children as a result of conflict and abuse by those in power. So this became the central focus of a large scale memorial uh, for Germany's memorial to the victims of war and dictatorship. So it underscores uh, the potency of uh, a woman who was sidelined initially to a school only for women artists who nevertheless um, was able to provide um, powerful examples of the printmaking technique to um, advocate for those who were powerless. And it translated those graphic skills to her sculptural skills as well, resulting in something that's an enduring legacy in a central monument in uh, a major European capital city.